Hello, this is uh, Christopher DeLay. This is a follow-up to the OCS, implementing OCSP video that I just posted a few minutes ago. Um, as I finished the video, I realized there were a couple things that I did want to cover in the video, and I thought of some additional things to um, add on. So this video will only be a couple uh, minutes. Um, if you have some spare time, you can, of course, feel free to visit my blog at https colon slash slash xdot509.blog. So like I said, there's a few things I wanted to cover. Some were the settings in the online responder, so we're going to take a look at that. We didn't really look at any additional configuration, but there is some additional configuration you can make, and I'll, I'll talk about that. So you can right, if you have the online responder tool open, you can right click on online responder and go to responder properties. This will give you um, some configuration options. So here's some configuration options for the web proxy. So I guess if you were um, trying to tune the uh, responder and uh, specifically in how it caches and responded, responds to queries, there's some tuning you can do here. I personally have never had to deal with this, but um, I guess if you were in a very large environment and you could use, you know, perfmon to see what's going on and to see how you could potentially tune this. So that's here in the web proxy. Um, as far as auditing, so here's a good thing. You can go through and enable auditing, which would probably be a good thing to do so that we get a security events logged whenever uh, anything sort of happens. Um, like it's mentioned here, if you do audit, you know, the requests that are submitted, you're, this is probably going to, since the whole function of this thing is to respond to requests, so you're probably going to get a lot of information there. So you may not uh, want that enabled. And then finally, here's some security over the responder. Um, I've, I guess this allows you to delegate administration of the uh, online responder, which I don't come to mind. I don't think I've ever done, but so this is definitely an option. If you have a highly secure environment and you want to kind of put, you kind of want to delegate the ability to do that, you can do that here. Okay, and there's uh, one other thing to look at, really. So if we go into our revocation configuration, and right click on our revocation configuration, we can click on uh, edit properties. And so um, in the previous video I mentioned, I was briefly talking about like an emergency revocation process. Well, here there is like um, an emergency revocation ability here. So you can enable local curl. So let's say there's something that you wanted the OCSP responder to tell clients right away is revoked if they asked then you could um, add to this local CRL and basically you would enable that and you would add the, um, the serial number for the certificate that you want to consider, want to be considered revoked and then the reason for the revocation and then the time and date for the revocation. So that would be kind of a way to push out like an emergency revocation. You, you revoke something sensitive and you want the uh, clients to figure that out right away, that's an option there. So that's the main reason I'm redoing this video because I wanted to show that aspect to this. And you can modify your revocation provider if you need to update that later on. We saw that in the first video. And then uh, signing, there's some different things you can do um, in terms of how uh, the responder deals with signing. So a selected hash algorithm is used by the on responder to sign responses. So by default, it's SHA-1. You can choose some other method if you want to, SHA-256 per se. As far as compatibility, I've never really altered this, so you'd have to research whether your OCSP client can handle a different hashing algorithm. I'm sure probably most can at this point. Um, do not prompt for credentials or cryptographic operations. You can, when I'm, about, I'm going to come back to this in a second. So enable nonce extension support. So nonce, some, uh, I think, especially like, I believe Cisco devices, um, there's this idea of nonce support. And it's just kind of like, and it, I want to say security thing. So basically, you're, the OCSP client can send a nonce in their request, and then they're and then they are going to want to see in the response from the OCSP responder the basically the nonce they spot they specified in the request. And so what that does is that kind of proves to the client that hey, you gave me an individual response to my question. You didn't give me some cached response. And so if you enable that, then um, the responder won't use cache responses by default. 
the um, responder will cache responses and reuse those responses as long as they're time valid. So that is an option, and um, a lot that does come up fairly frequently where um, you know I'll have someone say, "Hey, this is not this uh, responder is not working with my." I think it's Cisco devices usually. Um, you know what could possibly be going on, and this is pretty much the fix for that. Um, use va any valid OCSP signing certificate. So I'm going to kind of go off the top of my head here. So this could be wrong. I think generally the responder is looking for a signing certificate issued by the CA for which it's providing revocation information. Um, if you're not going to do that, let's say you're going to have like a cert issued by, I don't know, a third party CA or some other CA. Um, then you can select this use any valid OCSP signing certificate. 90-ish percent sure that's the reason for this. Again, this is off the top of my head, so I could be wrong. And then uh, online responder identifiers. All responses will include the following online responder information. So you can do key hash and signing certificate. Or subject of the signing certificate. I've never had to modify these. Um, obviously, the settings here for a reason. So maybe there is um, some particular reason for modifying this, but off the top of my head, I don't know. The one the last one we talk about because it ties in the final topic I'm going to talk about is the do not prompt for credentials for cryptog cryptographic operations. Sometimes um, if you're using, it's generally recommended if you're using like a HSM, a hardware security module for your certification authorities, that you also use an HSM to secure the um, OCSP signing certificate on the OCSP responder. So this is generally if you're using like a hardware security module where this um, the OCSP signing uh, certificate, the associated private key stored on the HSM, you would definitely want to uncheck this box here so that um, the HSM can prompt you for any sort of uh, interaction you have to do with it. Of course, I recommend you consult your HSM provider. Um, there are some, There is some definitely um, useful information here. So basically what I pulled up here is um, these are the two major HSM providers. So here's um, Dallas's uh, Microsoft OCSP integration guide. So I believe, yeah, they they do the Luna HSM. So if you're using a Luna HSM, you can refer to this in terms of uh, configuring um, your HSM with the uh, online responder. So that's out there. And then if you're using an Encipher uh, HSM, then they have this um, ADCS and OCSP sort of integration guide. So you can refer to this in the, um, you know, if you're when you're doing your deployment. I'll include both links in the description to the video. Obviously, these things could change in the future. So maybe if you're listening to this many years from now and these links don't work, that may, uh, I'm sorry. But that's those are the things that I wanted to cover. So once again, um, thank you for watching. And again, if you want to reach out to me, you can, uh, there's a contact page on my blog website where you can contact me. And uh, also on that site, I have plenty of blog entries. I haven't posted in a while. I have one coming up on Secure LDAP. I've just been preoccupied with some work things, so I haven't had a chance to get to that. But I'll work on getting that as soon as I can. And then, uh, of course, there's my videos. If you have any suggestions for a video or a blog or anything like that that you're interested in, then uh, you know, feel free to send me a message, and I'll consider doing that. All right, thank you, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.